from Microbe TV. This is Office Hours for Wednesday, December 19th. No, Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and welcome to your little viral corner of the internet. Today it is in New York. I'm at the incubator, as you can see. I have an early morning appointment tomorrow, so I'm hanging out in the city tonight. And uh, it is currently three degrees Celsius and mostly clear. It is really cold in the city. Uh, and here it's hot. It's, this, this room is hot because the, the heat is not regulatable. You turn it on, it's too hot. You turn it off, it's too cold. It's crazy stuff. But um, it's good to be back. I missed three installments uh, due to travel. And I'm really glad that many people have come back and not forgot your virology. And speaking of virology, I want to show you some pictures of the meeting I was at last week in Germany. Had a really nice trip. I went to Heidelberg uh, for a while, did two pods there, and went to the giant virus meeting in Tegernsey and did um, a pod there. And all good. We're going to release one of them. Uh, this weekend, I have a, an annoying cold. It's not COVID. I tested, and it is making it difficult for me to talk without coughing. Although tonight, maybe it'll be okay. I have my tea in my Nutrafil mug, courtesy of uh, Vanity Nutrition. Mm -mm. And I just want to remind everyone that next semester 2024 i'm teaching my virology course it'll the lectures will all go up again on youtube i'm hoping to make some good changes to them uh, in the next couple of weeks i have time to do that so look for that um and also i want to tell you at the meeting in germany there was open mic night at the end of the meeting right and people were encouraged to get up and do something entertaining and ha having to do with viruses, right? So I did a stand-up virus comedy act, <laughs> which was fun. And I have the video of it. Uh, Karen uh, took the video, and I'm gonna we're gonna put it on the Patreon for a while. It's kind of an exclusive, and then we'll put it on other places. But it's really fun. <laughs> I mean, I I got jokes from the internet, right? Here's a good one. What happened when the flu um, joined Instagram? Became an influenza. <laughs> it's funny. My volume is low. Yeah, we could bump it up. Bump it, bump it, bump it. Is that better? Now it's loud in my ears. Tell me if it's okay. Um... So let's take a look. So that's virus stand-up comedy. Look look for that. That's funny. <laughs> that's really funny. Let me show you some pictures of um, the meeting and my visit to Germany. Here we go. So this is the Max Planck Institute for, I guess it's medical research, right? And, you know, there are many Max Planck Institutes throughout Germany. These are very interesting. There are multiple ones in Heidelberg alone. They have different specialties, and they're all funded by a combination of federal money and local money. And there are many of them, and um, a lot of good research is supported at them. So I visited the Max Planck in Heidelberg, which is where um, Matthias Fischer is, who is a giant virologist. No, he's not. He's not giant, but. He uh, works on giant viruses and, interestingly, um, virophages. And that story is going to come up this weekend on TWIF, so I will, I will spare it for you. It's really interesting stuff. Kind of an immune system of in protists involving giant viruses. So I did a, a, a TWIF with him. Let's see what else we have. So this is the Max Planck. They reproduced the original library that was there, I don't know, many, many years ago. The furniture and the railings here. This is a lovely space, isn't it? I think it's very cool. 
Okay, and what else? No, I already showed that. I showed that. Uh, this is very cool. This is <laughs> this is a minion sequencing apparatus. It's this little cartridge. You put your DNA in it that you want to sequence, and it runs the reactions and then spits out the sequence via this cable, and it goes into the computer. Oh, it's so cool, isn't it? <laughs> it says here, do not unplug. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you, you do these runs for a long time. And these can be uh, long, long reads, very many bases, which is really good. So that is awesome. I had a, some lab stuff. I didn't put the picture here. Where, where is the next thing? Okay, here. Right, this is Matthias in his office, right? Doing stuff related to uh, the meeting. And I gave a seminar at the Max Planck in Heidelberg on, um, it doesn't say the title here, but it was about scientists communicating science. It was very fun because it, I was standing in front of this, this, I don't know, 50 or 60 people and very interactive. So that was cool. I liked that very much. And then um, we drove to Tegernsey. There five people in this car that Matthias rented. This is Matthias. There's Karen in the back. There's one of Matthias's postdocs, and there's another behind me. There's another Matthias person. So it was like a four or five hour drive on Autobahn, mostly really fast. It was very cool. I like the Autobahn. What else do we have here? So we get to Tegernsee, and there's a lake down below. This is up um, above it, obviously, on the way to the castle, which is where the meeting was. And um, it's beautiful, right? It had been snowing the previous days. In fact, Munich Airport was closed for some time. And um, it opened just in time for people to get to the meeting. But, you know, for a while it was going to be an issue. This is the castle, Ringberg Castle. This was uh, built by a duke. It's not very old. Uh, and he then gave it to the Max Planck, and they use it for meetings. So they they maintain it, and they, they run two meetings a week, which is very cool. And uh, this is the dining room. That's Matthias there. And the dining room ch chairs and tables, you can see, rather not my style of architecture. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but that's what it is. And this is Jim Van Etten, who is a guy who works on giant viruses out in Nebraska. He works on chloroviruses, which were the biggest viruses for many years until we discovered like Mimi virus and other big viruses as well. So he he um, still works on those really cool stuff. And this is, you know, coffee break. This is Matthias. This is um, Curtis Suttle who is a, uh, you know, an ocean virologist uh, up in Vancouver. And I see him all the time. He's been on TWIV. And this is Susan Coelho, who is in uh, Portugal, um, working on a brown algae virus system. So uh, you, you can work on green algae, which are, of course, the ones that make oxygen. And the brown ones don't, of course. They do other things. All right, that's, uh, what else? Yeah, that's that. This is the audience, a very small meeting, right? Maybe 60 people in a small room. So it's very nice, very, very nice, cozy. And this is an interesting VR thing that um, River brought from uh, Texas. He's a structural biologist there. And you can visualize molecules with this. And this, this lady who is uh, Victoria, and she was on TWIV, actually. Um, she's playing with it. And here is lunch, right, at the table, uh, you know, bring in your food. <laughs> Excuse me. Bring in your food. It's cool. A lot of fun. You, you sit at tables and you talk to people. It's really, really good. And this is the snow. It's just beautiful, right? Really beautiful. And, okay, so what is a giant virus? 
Well, here is a bacterium, about two microns in length, right? And here's a parvovirus, little guy down at the right, 18 to 28 nanometers. You have Zika virus, HIV, a bacteriophage, and then the first giant virus, Mimi virus here. You can see 400 nanometers. It dwarfed everything else. And then, of course, other viruses even bigger like pithovirus, 1.5 microns, almost the size of a bacteria. And um, these mainly seem to infect protists, but um, there's some discussion about whether they, they infect people or not. There was an interesting report at this meeting that maybe they do infect the, infect the guts of humans. We'll see about that. But um, they, they're they important because they can infect, these viruses can infect green algae and influence oxygen production. So green algae produce about half the oxygen on the earth. They make a lot. You know, we all think of plants, but the green algae are important too. And the viruses can interrupt with that. So uh, as many people studying these for a variety of reasons. Very cool giant viruses, so love them. All right, that is giant viruses. So let's get some questions here. No, oh, where, where's everybody from? Let's see. Oh, I, I know where everyone's from, right? We have our moderators who I'd like to thank. We have Tom from Oregon Coast Range. We have... Let's see. Let's move down here. We have, where's other, here we have Les. Thank you all for moderating. We have Vanity, there we go, who's leaving at 9 p.m. to go fly, I guess. Maybe not do something else. Steph is uh, here. She's in San Francisco, of course. And... Who else do we have? A lot of familiar faces. Uh, here's Carol, who sent us a lovely card here at the incubator the other day of her family. Thank you, Carol. It's nice to meet your family. Will is from China. Cool. Lucadia, California, Northeast Ohio, Dayton. The UK. Is the audio okay now? I did raise it up, so let me know. Saudi Arabia, that's very cool. South Carolina. There's Mark, who's in California. And... Let's see. I'm just looking for where people are from. Rima is from Iowa. Volume is good. Okay. <laughs> Feeling guilty not getting past lecture six in the 2023 series. Watch the previous two. Well, you watched the previous two. That's not bad. Coralie is from New South Wales, Australia. Visto is from Sydney. Uh, yeah, I have a little cold going on here. I had one about a month ago. And I, te I, I did a COVID test and it was negative. So Daniel thought it might have been a rhinovirus. Because it's really, the symptoms are restricted to the upper tract, right? It, runny nose, sore throat. And then in Germany, you got another one, which started Monday. So now... I'm sniffling, and I'm sorry for the noise. <laughs> yeah, it's not COVID. Yep. Mark is in San Jose. Yeah. Yes, welcome home to New York in the incubator. It's good to be back. Um, Tomball, Texas. Not traveling anymore until May, I believe, because I'll be teaching in the spring. Trinken Sie Gutenberg Deutscher Wine. I don't know. I don't think so. No, I didn't drink any wine in Germany. Santa Barbara, Frank, and Les is from California. <laughs> Bernard is in Baltimore tonight. 
Piffle Prattle is in Old England. Rach is from the Isle of Man. Jefferson Space is in Miami. Dagfin is from Oslo. I don't like this runny nose stuff. Oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> Luna's from Iowa. Yep. John is from Minneapolis. Uh, Hat is from L.A. Where it's not three degrees. Nebby is from Central Florida. Truth or dare, La Jolla. Doreen, hello from... And Jim and Mrs. Doreen, Mr. Doreen in, in Elgin, Illinois. Good to see everybody. 150 viewers so far. That's pretty good. All right. Yep. Everyone is uh, a little bit sick. Yep. I, I don't particularly like be having a cold. It uh, interrupts your self-esteem, your self-confidence. You feel crappy. So I don't like it. All right. Everybody wants to know why I took the the COVID booster. The, it's not a booster. The new vaccine, right? Against one of the XBB uh, variants. So I got uh, a, couple, a month or two ago, I got... I got the, the COVID vaccine, I got RSV vaccine, and I got the flu vaccine. And then when I got sick later, I figured, well, it wasn't COVID because I tested it. It was negative. Probably rhinovirus. So why did I do that? Um, I don't want to go into extreme details, but, you know, I've always said, and, and Paul Offit has always said that he doesn't think the the new vaccine is for everyone. Right? He thinks it's for people... I don't know, 65, 70 years and older uh, with comorbidities. So I'm 70, and I happen to have a new com comorbidity that I didn't have before. I don't really want to talk about it at this point, um, but it makes me immunosuppressed, and so I thought it was important to have um, that vaccine. So a lot of people said I was being hypocritical <laughs> because I always said you don't need it, but I said you need it if... You have comorbidity. So I now have a comorbidity, and that's why I got it. So uh, why that is, I don't know. Maybe we'll discuss in the future, but I don't want to talk about it right now. So I hope you understand. Okay, Garth. So if, if you have no comorbidities, it's good. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, Garth. Uh, Oh, so, so someone had asked a question about affinity maturation. Affinity maturation, of course, is when you have, say, a vaccine and you make antibodies against it, and then those antibodies are processed in the B cells, in the lymphocytes, to make higher affinity antibodies because you want to have um, higher affinity uh, binding to the epitopes. So in affinity maturation... The antibodies that are made uh, go into the lymph node and the, the genes are mutated by the process called somatic hypermutation. And they randomly make mutations and some of them may, may increase the affinity of the antibody for the antigen. So the, the antigen is in the follicular lymph nodes and the follicular cells in the lymph nodes and the antibody hangs on it. And as they as new antibodies are made, if they're low affinity, they're thrown away. And if they're high affinity, they're kept. So this goes on in, in multiple cycles. And um, if you do vaccine doses too close together, you interrupt that process. So initially, if you remember, the first two doses of mRNA vaccines were given, what, four, three, four weeks apart. And that will interrupt somatic hy hypermutation and affinity maturation it's not good. You should wait longer between doses. And so the next dose uh, was given much later. Okay. Okay. Um, that's affinity maturation. Someone else asked a question, but it's not here. Yes, here it is. Some, uh, DR said, please explain. Affinity maturation. <clears throat> that's it. Uh, Tom writes, I recall you mentioned lecturing on recombination in enteroviruses. 
Could that be a TWIV topic, or do you have video of that lecture you might post? Uh, you know, it could be. It could be a twi It could be a TWIV topic. You know, it's it's a bit. I don't know if it fits in the, the virology course. I'd have to see where it would go. But I mean, the combination of enterovirus is very important, right? It makes the vaccines. This NOPV two, which was engineered to not cause paralysis, it makes it lose all of the changes that were put in. Now it paralyzes kids. So, um, that's, uh, that's what's going on. I'll, I'll cover it at some point. I just don't know when here. Yep. Oh, the flies. Yes. Remind me to explain the flies. So the last time we were live with Paul B. Nash, you may remember there were flies all over the place in my New Jersey office. Oh my gosh. All over the light. I took pictures and showed you and I was smacking them. So, where did they come from? It turns out that <laughs> um, there's a fireplace behind me in, in my home uh, studio. And a squirrel had dropped into it and died because it couldn't get out, right? Uh, we have a cap on the top, but somehow the squirrel got through it. <laughs> Excuse me. And... Um, Died, and that's where the flies came from, right? So took out the uh, uh, squirrel, and flies were gone. Killed all the flies with sticky paper, and that was the end of that. But that was very interesting, right? I didn't know where they were coming from, so it was a dead squirrel in the in the fireplace. And the squirrel, poor thing, it was... The, the fireplace has this fake uh, wood, you know, with a gas burner. And the poor squirrel was eating the... The, the fake wood, you know, for something to eat. It's so, just so sad that it had to die like that. Oh, well. That's the story of the flies. Lord of the flies. <laughs> uh, Santa Fe, it's 31F. Dagfin is in Norway. It's 2 a.m. I'm always impressed that people come from, um, to watch from all sorts of countries where it's really late. So I, I met a couple of uh, virologists from Norway last week at the virology meeting in Tegernsey. In fact, uh, Victoria, the, my guest on TWIV, she's in a lab in Brazil, but she's doing a um, an internship or a something or other. I don't know the name of it, but she's doing it in... Um, uh, What am I saying? I forgot. <laughs> oh, she's, she's, she's working in Norway collecting uh, giant viruses. Anyway, her PI in Norway said, you know, in the winter, Norway is dark all the time and friggin' cold. And in the summer, it's warmer, but it's light all the time. So if you don't like being all dark and or light, that's a problem, right? <laughs> Wayne is from Urbana. Jan is from Tucson. Here is Andrew. Oh, Andrew is another moderator. Thank you for moderating again from uh, New Zealand. That's very cool. Plan is to go to Australia twice next year, so maybe I could combine with a trip to New Zealand. We'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> Lord of the Flies. Good to be here. Yeah, that's Alan Dove's line. So because of my scratchy voice, I, I decided to cancel Twiv Friday because I can't really talk for long periods without coughing, and that's not good for audio. So I have a episode from Heidelberg I will release, which is really good. Yep. Yeah. So uh, it's a lot of people are asking about the vaccine. I think I've told you. How was Germany? I had a good trip. The, the science was good. We sp I spent two days in Heidelberg, recorded two podcasts there, then went to the giant virus meeting at Taggart. This is the, excuse me. <laughs> and um, I did a, a 
pod there a twiv there, which was really great. It should be fun. Yep, that was Germany. The incubator is uh, open. <laughs> you guys could visit over the holidays if you like. Just send me an email of incident microp.tv. We'll arrange a time. Kang says, who I met in Chicago, by the way, can the phages of the bacteria in the normal intestinal microbiome have a pathological effect on the host of the microbiome? Well, in the sense that they become unbalanced, yes. So if the phages destroy beneficial microbiome, that could be a problem, right? So there has to be a balance of that. And we're just learning more and more about that. But it's quite clear that the interaction between phages and bacteria in the gut and elsewhere is very important. Yeah. Tom Hardy of Maths has time to kick back and enjoy. <laughs> yep. Okie dokie. Yep. Uh, yep, yep. Looking for questions from you folks. Well, here, Frank, what is the latest on the mystery pneumonia from China? I just think it's pneumonia, right? It's winter, and uh, viruses circulate more extensively in the winter, and that's what is causing pneumonia. I don't think there's any reason to believe it's a new virus. It's just the old ones. But, you know, the press gets all worked up when they see this sort of thing. Oh, my gosh, there's a new pandemic. No, not so, not so short after covid Right? Very unlikely. But it's just viruses causing pneumonia. Yep. When performing <laughs> plaque assay with phage, is it recommended to add phage to bacteria suspension and incubate a few minutes before pouring into the plate? That's what I used to do. I did rotation in a phage lab when I was a graduate student. <laughs> and that's what I did. Yep. As one plaque or clearing. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Indicate one phage. Um, it can. Sometimes you need more than one particle to make a plaque. It really depends on the particle to PFU ratio, right? Sometimes you need more than one. Sometimes you need just one. So it depends on the phage. It's a good question. By the way, we have um, TWIM, TWIM 300 tomorrow. Right? That's a big, that's a big deal, right? So we're going to have <clears throat> Alio come back. <laughs> that should be interesting. I hope he remembers how to connect. He always had trouble. <laughs> so, yeah, that should be fun. Any info on the dog respiratory illness in the U.S.? I don't know. U.S. dog respiratory illness. I always like to... The current surge has been spreading in areas of the U.S. and Canada over the last year. Mystery dog illness may not be a mystery at all. A variety of canine pathogens, none of them new, could be driving the recent outbreaks. So, you know, it is um, usually not what you think it is, right? <laughs> uh, does anyone know if breast milk, which has been frozen, given once a day to an otherwise formula-fed infant might provide any protection. Uh, are you asking whether the freezing is a problem? I'm pretty sure you can do that. Yeah. Yep. Proper storage and preparation. According to the CDC, you can store it frozen for... 
up to six months. And um, it's okay. So, yeah, if you... Uh, What are you saying here? There's no breast milk which has been frozen, given once a day to an otherwise form. It might provide, yeah, if the mother uh, was vaccinated, right? That would definitely provide some protection. The mother would have to be vaccinated, of course, right? Hmm. John is looking forward to the new lectures. Thank you. <clears throat> I will try and update them, right? Make some substantial updates. I would like to do that. Yeah. That library at the Max Planck, really nice. <laughs> Very pretty. There was one person working in it. Just one. He was, she was working at a computer. There was nobody else there. Uh, I'm reading a book called Thinking Like a Phage by Mary Ewell, who was a good friend of Elio Schechter. She used to write for his blog, Small Things Considered. But she passed away a few years ago, unfortunately, so she doesn't write anymore. But um, it's good, st <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> yeah, the sequencer is amazing, <laughs> right? That little thing, just you put, you pipette the DNA in... <clears throat> And it sequences, it does the reaction. It's so cool. Very cool. Any thoughts on the new self copying single stranded mRNA vaccines? Self copying. Which, um, hey, you need less dose because it can replicate on its own. Um, I. I just think it's a good idea. I just don't know how it's going to work, right? We need to test it in people, but it is a, a good application to a number of different viruses, for sure. I think it's cool. I know. Please take some time out to recover from your cold. All I do is <laughs> come here. <clears throat> yep, I come here. The perfect predator. Yeah, that's Stephanie Strathdee's book about her husband who was saved by phage therapy for his acinetobacter infection. Yeah. The perfect predator. Yeah, it nails it uses a minion sequence here, for sure. You get long reads out of it. It's very good. There are many great Italian scientists. Do you speak Italian with them? Or is everything done in English? I'm not good enough to speak Italian with anybody. I could speak with a, I could speak with a taxi driver and say a few rudimentary things, but no, I'm not fluent enough. Although maybe if I stayed there for a couple of months, I would get fluent, right? So no, the language of science is English for sure. Yep. For sure. <laughs> the giant viruses were hiding <laughs> because, ironically, they were too big. Yeah, they, they were the Mimi virus, that first big one, was thought to be a bacterium. It was in the contact lens fluid of a person with some you know, infection, and they looked at it under the microscope. They said, ah, it's a bacteria. It, will free it was frozen for 10 years. And then they decided to uh, pull it out, <clears throat> and it was a virus. You could sequence the genome, and you could tell that it's a virus. Yeah. <laughs> mm. ah, slow. I recently got a signed copy of The Perfect Predator. That's great. I haven't read it, but I hear it's good. Ask some questions, folks. What do you want to know? <laughs> Pete says, I have an early start to drive the 100 mile each way to trip to Dorset to see mom who isn't doing well after a fall and two fractures. I'm sorry to hear about that. I'm very sorry to hear about that. 
Uh, by the way, uh, all these things on the screen are places you can go to get um, swag. We can go to vaccinated.us. They're not they're not giving us profits anymore, but they have cool shirts, spike shirts. Then you can give money at Venmo or you go to microbe.tv slash contribute where the links is for everything are there, including Venmo, PayPal, and Patreon. Please support us. We want to make Microbe TV endure forever, right? Would be great. Do we know the correlates of protection for influenza? Uh, Many people have studied it, right? So protection against severe disease is mostly T cells. So not the antibodies that are induced by the vaccine, but it's the T cells. I, I think that's correct, and I've seen a bunch of papers on that. But it can be different now. Brown algae do produce oxygen. Just have extra pigments that changes color from green. Okay. Thanks for the correction. Yeah. Beyond the noise was interesting and worrying. Uh, Very worrying that people want to propagate false information, right? Why would you do that? Hmm. I don't know what, what's motivating those people to do that. It's a puzzle, right? Because we're scientists and we want correct information. So what are they doing? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> uh, I know. You want me to get lots of rest. I will. I'll try and end a bit shorter tonight, okay? Look, we have someone from Colombia. Levis Marugo Castaneda. Welcome to the live stream. If you have a question about viruses, there's certainly plenty in Colombia, right? Eat capsaicin. Okay. (laughs) There is a shortage of monoclonal, RSV monoclonal antibody around these parts too. Okay. Yeah. Everything's in shortage, right? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the, <clears throat> some people are saying about the latest This Week in Neuroscience, right? <clears throat> Where they figured out how electroacupuncture works to inhibit uh, sepsis. Okay. Very cool. Uh, Truth or Dare says, uh, as the increasing number of changes and variants affecting the effectiveness of the current rapid antigen test, have the tests changed at all to match better variants? So I understand that, yeah, <clears throat> some people have found that the tests aren't working as, as good for some of the variants, and so the tests are updated. So rats with variants, yeah, it's... um. <clears throat> you have to check when a new variant arises whether the rapid antigen test is still going to work for sure, right? I'm glad uh, you like office hours. Thank you very much. <laughs> I never thought Vincent needs to explain his booster choice. Well, that's okay. I'm a public figure, right? <clears throat> I'm an educator, so I feel I should explain my choices. And um, because people listen to what we say, it's important. So that's it. (laughs) Uh, The uh, NSB14, that's a protein of SARS-CoV-2, can mimic the five prime cap on host mRNA to evade detection by rig eye like receptors. Yeah, big guy like receptors will recognize uh, RNA and RNA structures and make an innate immune response, right? Interferon and so forth. Do other viruses use this strategy? And mimicking uh, the five prime cap. I just think that um, 
What is it? Uh, Hantavirus, right? Five prime cap. Uh, I think there's some storage in, of cellular caps and Peabody's for viral translation. I don't think it's exactly the same. <clears throat> it's something slightly different, but it's an interesting question, right? Anybody know? Are we certain as to what all the comorbidities are now, and have they changed at all with the various mutations? Are we checking that? <clears throat> well, the, the comorbidities are all, you know, lumped together, and um, I, I don't think that there's really good evidence that, uh, that the variants change with respect to pathogenesis of these variants. It's really, <clears throat> it's really hard to do because it's an observational study, and observational studies where you look at a population, they're always um, confounded. They're always confounding factors, so it's hard to make conclusions about virulence and so forth, transmissibility. Yep. <laughs> Does the deletion <clears throat> of wild-type antigen in the XBB vaccine mean that XBB <clears throat> is a new strain versus a new variant? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, I do think that... Uh, The, the, the distinction between strains and variants is very muddled, so I'm not I'm not aware of any clear thinking on that truth or dare. <clears throat> Tona says, Vincent, there wasn't time for discussion on Tim's acupuncture talk. What did you think? I like that very much. I thought it was interesting that they have a mechanism for how electro acupuncture works. Right, you put the, the needles near the sciatic nerve, sends a signal up to the brain. That sends a signal back down to the vagus, which turns on synthesis of dopamine, and, and that is uh, suppressing inflammation. Very cool, right? I think it's brilliant. But it should be something you could do in a clinical trial, right? And I don't know why it, it hasn't been. Maybe it's difficult to do. It's very cool. I like it. <clears throat> Yeah, we're going to ASV in June in uh, Ohio State. <clears throat> yeah, we can go to a restaurant. No problem. I will make time for it. Yeah. We still do the mRNA vaccine frame shift proteins. Problem. We have to reduce unwanted protein. I'm not aware that this is a real problem, right? This is... Um, a minor fraction of what happens, and it's not clear that such proteins are of any consequence. I haven't seen any data that it would. <clears throat> uh, yes. <clears throat> I'm glad he's back. And Amy lives since he's been away. I miss Amy. Uh, I, I, I'm in contact, contact with Amy regularly to find out what she's doing. And uh, she may be listening tonight, right? I'll get some suggestions maybe later on. Let's see. The FDA-approved chick chikungunya vaccine is self-replicating. That's cool, right? <clears throat> yep. By the way, uh, Parasites Without Borders is doing a matching fundraiser right now, right? The last months of 2023 and the first month of 2024, Daniel will match any contributions to Parasites Without Borders and um, give us 2X. So if you give $5,000, he'll give us 10 up to a certain amount. So that's a good way to extend your your donation, right? You get a deduction and uh, it, it goes farther. So parasiteswithoutborders.com. Uh, let's see. Hmm. 
in in Norway there are only two seasons winter in July it's cool <clears throat> yeah it's just, Andrew loved today's twit yeah it blows your mind yep I had a recording issue with it that's why it's a little wonky sorry about that we would understand Carol says we would understand if you want to end office hour early so you can get some rest you know I can't sleep I wake up with a cough right Sore throat cough. <clears throat> so, while I'd like to, it just doesn't doesn't really help. You know the the coughing during the night is annoying, right? So, thank you for the thought, but I'll go as long as I can. It's um, it's okay. I'm fine. It just just sounds worse than it is, right? I'm out of tea. I need someone to get me tea. There's nobody here. Incubator's empty. Oh, well. Professor of the Flies, yes. <laughs> we will, Andrew says we'll have a big a hongi and a hangi for you. <laughs> I do have a cough thing here. Watch. Cough it's a button of here. It was for Dixon, but it doesn't come here anymore. So I took it. You push a button, it interrupts the mic. So you can cough all you want. It's not annoying, which is what I am being. I'm sorry about that. You can take a week off. Um, it's just a cold. Make more tea. I have, a, I have a boiler here. <laughs> Sorry. I have a boiler here at the incubator, which put water in. You push a button and it makes out water. It's great. <laughs> but <clears throat> I'm not going to get up and interrupt my cafe clatch with you guys. Yeah. All right. Craig says, Godzilla minus one is excellent. You all should see it. So would there be viruses for kaiju? Do cryptids have viruses? Only zoonotic from other species. I have no idea what any of that means. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know what any of that means. Someone explain it. Do you want listener picks for the Top Shen Toast? 10 shows of 2023. I would love that, yes. You can all send them in to twivetmicrobe.tv. Unless you want all the podcasts, right? Do you want all of them? Yeah, you could do that. You could send them to, yeah, you can still send them to twivetmicrobe.tv. That would be fun. You can read those, yep. <clears throat> I understand there are a lot of viruses in the upper atmosphere. How do they get up there on air currents? Yeah, they get blown up from like the desert, which is full of virus particles. They're just thrown up into the atmosphere and then carried long distances. We did a paper on that some time ago in uh, in Twiv, I believe. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yep. So they're they're brought up there on wind currents. Uh, did anyone see Dr. Barker on Jeopardy? The questions were odd and not flattering topics for scientists. I did not see that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, is it, It's reasonable to expect China to have a lot of sickness in the first year after ending the zero COVID lockdowns. Yes. These lockdowns prevent a lot of illness from spreading, so it's going wild now. That's part of it for sure. <clears throat> Do you sleep in the incubator? No, I get a hotel. There are plenty of hotels around here. And um, so that's where I'm staying tonight. I think on 28th, not too far from here. I can get up early, get a get coffee and a bagel, and then go to my early appointments. Yeah. I don't sleep here. I could, but there's no, there's no place to wash. There's no shower. There's a toilet, but... I don't really want to sleep here. 
if I can't take a shower in the morning. <laughs> I need a hot toddy. <laughs> To help with your throat is annoying. Yeah. So there, there are <clears throat> times when it's fine, and then it gets tickling, right? And then you, uh, so it, um, <clears throat> it's just annoying. So Vanity writes, "Is the pith virus the one with the cork?" Yes, it's got a cork, and the French called it a cork because they're funny about that, right? And they um, thought it would pop out and let the DNA out, right? So they have a fascination with, with the wine, right? So they said the cork <laughs> pops out to let out the genome. Very interesting. <clears throat> Let's see. John writes, have we stratified risk of severe COVID by type of immune deficiency suppression? Yeah, there's some, right? There is auto... There are, Antibodies to interferons. Um, <clears throat> that's the one that comes to mind, which is a big one. Um, and you get severe COVID as a consequence. What else? Mm, can't, can't remember. I have a guest speaker, Priya Shah from UC Davis. Yeah, I know Dr. Shah. Sure. Uh, Doreen, thank you for your contribution. I had COVID round two last week. I wasn't scared, just handled it forever in your debt. Good. <clears throat> thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's too, too big to fit in an incubator. <laughs> and preemies need them more. <clears throat> Uh, so, um, Will says, latest from China CDC, so COVID-19 continuing to drop to a pretty low level, but flu way up. Today it's reported that expert Zhang Nanshan expects a new COVID-19 wave in the new year, possibly. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. I'd love to hear more of Elias Schechter's early life. So, actually, we did do an episode with his early life. Where was that? We were in um, San Diego. <clears throat> so he's at San Diego State. And we did a pod with him. And it was cool. He talked a lot about his life. So you just search for, for that one. It's, um, it's really good. <clears throat> You know, what gold medications? <laughs> well, uh, chicken soup. Last night I had chicken soup, yeah. And um, a lot of people told me I should take chicken soup, so I, I did. And I take some cough suppressant. <clears throat> I can't take um, a lot of different things, but the cough suppressant is good, and, you know, I, a lot of other meds I can't take. Chicken soup and this cough suppressant. I can't remember the name, but it's not bad. But it just suppresses your cough. Um, doesn't do anything for the runny nose. David wants to know if I will take public transit home. I will tomorrow, and I will wear a mask for sure, right? Because I don't want to freak other people out. Absolutely. <laughs> when you asked Alan Dove to join you for the very first time, had you spoken with him about regular participation? Yeah, I did. <clears throat> I said, are you interested in joining this thing this week in virology, which is a conversation? And he said yes. So... So it's unusual that I would just say, join us, instead of checking him out first, right? But I thought he would be good, because after all, he was... 
He was my PhD student. I'm going to get a glass of water. I'll be right back. Hang on. Okay. Where is my microphone? Here it is. I need to plug it in. See? Now I can hear myself. So that's the story with Alan Dove. The question. <clears throat> People on Twitter keep complaining that a sterilizing vaccine is not being made for SARS-2. I keep trying to tell them it's not currently possible for this virus. Am I wrong at all? No, you're not wrong. Most viruses, you can't make a sterilizing vaccine, which will inhibit infection, right? Can't do it. Why? <clears throat> you have mucosal immunity. You have some memory B cells. Within a few months, they drop in levels. So when you're infected with a virus and you have that immunity, it takes some time for the B cells to amplify and start making antibodies. And in that time, the virus is reproducing. So it can't be sterilizing. You can't have high levels of antibody derived from a vaccine that would prevent infection. It's just not physiologically possible. And the people who are working on these say, maybe it is. Okay, well, I haven't seen any strategies that would suggest that it works. You know, um, <clears throat> the flu mist vaccine, right? It's no better. So it's an attenuated vaccine you spray in your nose. It's no better than the injected flu vaccines. So, uh, I'm, you know, the idea that a spray is going to give you sterilizing immunity just is not holding up with flu, with our experience. So that's what I think. Yep. <laughs> the like button has been smashed. Hit the like button, folks. We have 167 people and 113 likes. You can um you can like us, please. Uh let's see. Amy says <clears throat> SARS-CoV-2 would find another way of entering a cell if ACE2 didn't work. Has it been entering by another means from the start? Not as far as I know. No, it is using, uh, it is binding ACE2. Not aware of any other um, receptor being bound by the virus. Not, nothing that's physiologically significant. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, be okay. I'll be okay. I know everyone wants me to call it quits early, but I'll be okay. I want to get through some questions here. I'm feeling fine. I mean, I'm sniffling. Sniffling is like all right, something you can deal with, right? Sniffling and congestion, blah, blah, blah. It's fine. <clears throat> ah. I have been lax on attendance here lately because I'm on the VA's COVID data design team now. Cool. Turns out COVID can keep one rather busy. So very glad tonight that I'm not still at work. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. What are you doing? Very cool. It's the most interesting piece of research you have read this year. Oh my gosh. So many, right? <clears throat> I'd have to go look through all the papers, right? Including all the pods, right? Not just um, 
not just Twiv, right? Others as well. So many cool ones. Look at that. Perfect predator. Voluminous diarrhea. Cat coronavirus gaze function in Cyprus. Uh, you know, it's it's an interesting question, and there's so many cool papers that we have done. I'd have to go through them all for the year. But you're going to send in your most, your favorite papers, right? Or episodes, that's fine. And um, I'll, I'll do that too. I think it's good. I mean, there are a lot of good things here that we talked about, but... <clears throat> That none of them sticks out. I'm sure there's something there that's going to stick out. Uh, I'm just uh, scrolling through and nothing's catching me. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a great question. Arbitur 2579. I'm going to look at that in detail. I think that's, that's a cool thing to sort out. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Did you ever sequence whatever it is you have that causes a cold? Are you curious? Yeah. <clears throat> so I, and I had the cold, I don't know, a month ago. I did a COVID test, right? And it was negative. So I had the swab in the tube and I was going to send it off to be sequenced. I haven't done that yet. It's still in the freezer, but it can be done. Yeah. I could do this one too, because I'm probably still in a viral shedding phase, right? I mean, so the thing is, the way you get rhinoviruses is you, you touch railings in public, and then we all touch our noses, right, in our mouth, in our eyes, and that's how you transmit it. If you just didn't do that, you'd have a, a lower probability of uh, infecting yourself. Yeah? Yep. Um, so, yes, I am curious. But uh, there's limited things I can do, right? <clears throat> if and when H5N1 crosses to humans, do we have a vaccine pipeline ready? Yes, we do. We do have H5 vaccines, including mRNA vaccines. They're being tested. And that I think that should be good. Um, that, but depending on which you know, isolate is the one that's going to cause infections, we don't know. But we're pretty good at making quick vaccines these days, right? I read to I learned today that the phage capsid can be used for bacterial horizontal gene transfer between cells. Uh, so you're saying the capsid with <clears throat> With DNA in it, right? Yeah, well, they they do move genes around for sure, right? Infecting one host, picking up some genes, infect another host. That happens all the time. Phages are great gene exchanger, for sure. I think that's what you're talking about, right? Don't forget to mention Parasites Without Borders. Got my donation in this week. Thank you. Parasiteswithoutborders.com. Daniel will double match your donation. Yep, it's good. <clears throat> They sound worse than I really am. It's good. How long does immunity to norovirus last? Or can the kids and I look forward to a bout of it every season until they're old enough to wash their hands properly and stop sticking things in their mouth? So, yeah, immunity is not durable. And uh, you get reinfected often. And, yes, it, part of the problem is poor hand hygiene, right? So, if But adults have poor hand hygiene too, right? They're not great. So, um, so, um, it's, uh, you know, this is the, this has implications for a vaccine, right? Because, 
uh, if you have a vaccine that induces immunity, it's not going to be much better than the, the virus infection, right? So that's that's a problem with the norovirus vaccine. <laughs> People are begging me to stop. <laughs> Do you think aerosolized phages will become standard of care for pneumonia? Would it be viable as a pre-hospital treatment or would it need to be gate-kept behind a physician's scope? I, I think there's some problems with phages for pneumonia, although there have been some successes where it's aerosolized into the lung and it works. But... I think um, it's problematic. And so how would it be administered, right? I just don't know how how FDA would regulate that, right? This is part of the issue that we're dealing with. How do you regulate a phage cocktail that changes depending on the infection you have? <laughs> what do you think about Project Next Gen? trying to fund a new COVID vaccine to enter clinical trials by mid-2024. What might they be looking to accomplish that current vaccines don't do and how? So they want to make these so-called sterilizing vaccines, right? So vaccines that would be sprayed in your nasal cavity and reproduce and make durable uh, immunity and protect you against infection. But there's no indication that that would work. Right. They want it to be sterilizing so that people don't get sick at all. But I think that's unreasonable. Most vaccines are not sterilizing. Right. <laughs> Are viruses still considered parasites? <clears throat> Even though they are not alive. Well, a virus is an organism with two phases, right? The particle and the infected cell. In fact, Matthias Fischer agreed with that uh, in, in Heidelberg. We talked about it a, a bit. So you have the particle, the virus particle, which is not living, and the infected cell is living. So all, all, so it's a, it's a parasite because it goes into cells, takes over the cells to make new virus particles. So yes, they are considered parasites because the, the infected cell is alive. It's called the viral cell hypothesis. Uh, dear Vincent, you sound suffering a bit with that cold. Germany had a give for the virology professor to study firsthand. <laughs> I guess. It's all right. RSV shots are relatively easy to find in California. I got mine in late October. Have things changed since then? I don't know if RSV vaccines are RSV vaccines available. Well, I think there are some shortages. I don't know if it's the monoclonal or the actual vaccine. I heard that on um, Daniel's clinical update many times. Microbe TV, the matter's microbial with the phages and a brilliant wife saving the day. More exciting than any movie. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yep. A while back, DARPA was really worried that chikungunya would arrive in the south of the U.S., but it never happened. Why is that? Places like Florida or El Hay seem like they would be perfect. And it's probably a matter of the vector not being present, right? You need um, chikungunya. Sorry, that's the virus. You need Aedes uh, albopictus. So I think they're short in those regions. Uh, let's see, chikungunya vector. Let's search. Yeah, it's, it's Aedes albopictus. Okay, so that may be limiting. <laughs> Hot lemon and honey. <clears throat> I have I have um, tea and honey. 
think I have lemon, but I do need that. Lemon and like ginger too, that would really help, right? So I'm going to be here tomorrow. Um, so that, that's, that should be good. Um, do you have viruses, comments of viruses that are most likely to encounter at a summer youth camp? Well, yeah, certainly the noroviruses are a big one, right? But influenza viruses can circulate uh, in the summer as well in camps with a lot of crowding, right? Um, yeah, youth camp. What does your cup say? It says, uh, they call me neutrophil because I slay all day. And this is a gift from Vanity Nutrition. Sometimes it's very cool, right? They call me neutrophil because I slay all day. I like that. <laughs> Wastewater detection for polio is straightforward because it's only human sources. What do we have to look out with for wastewater SARS-CoV-2 contamination? Are there industrial contaminations too? I don't know what you're asking. I mean, the, there can be other animal sources of SARS-CoV-2 getting into the wastewater chain, right? Which wouldn't be the case for poliovirus. So that's a, that's a big difference, right? Difference. Right. Uh, yes, there can be industrial contaminations. There can be animal contaminations, right? As well. Make more tea. <laughs> um, after I'm done, I might. Depends when we finish. I want to uh, just go to my hotel and go to sleep. <clears throat> Chikungunya is a terrible disease. No many who had it. It has a rebound and long-term effects in many, like flare-ups, in even young, healthy people. Yes, your joints are never the same, right? It's um, it's, it's it's a virus that wreaks havoc in your joints. Yeah, for sure. Uh, take care of yourself. You have to make your way home. No, I don't. I just going to a hotel down the street. Don't have to make my way home. Thank you for <laughs> the um, <clears throat> support rec recommendation. <laughs> yeah. 40 years ago, Dr. Patterson in Hong Kong found that electrostimulation could dramatically reduce cold turkey amongst those getting off drugs. It's like el electro... Um, uh, yeah, acupuncture, right? Yeah. Well, that's what the paper was about, electroacupuncture. Yep, yep. Hmm. And Amy, if you're listening, I was reading some of your papers. Thanks, miss you, girl. I don't know if she's listening. She should be. She should be give me support, right? Approval of decongestant, approval revoked. Yeah, so there's a decongestant. Um, it's very common, and the FDA has revoked its approval because apparently it doesn't do anything. Amy just told me about that. FDA, let's, let's look it up. FDA decongestant withdrawn. which can decongestant. It's phenylephrine. Works no better than a placebo at relieving congestion. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you could put up an interesting graphic while you put some water in the boiler. You're right. There's a lot of things I can do. You're right. Phenylephedrine. Warm up those red <laughs> those throat blood vessels. Bring those white blood cells into the area. Yeah. All right, so Richard says, Kaiju are the giant monsters like Godzilla. Okay, I didn't know that. A lot of things I don't know. And I don't pretend to know, right? I'm, I'm not an expert in all things. 
so I defer to those who uh, know otherwise. Rafael said, I've been working the night shifts for a while and missing a lot of the live streams. But hello from Brazil, everybody. I hope you get better soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Start snorting salt water. I bought a little thing to spray salt water in your nose. I like that, actually. In the morning, you put it in at night, and it loosens up your mucus, your mucosa, right? I think that's very good. But, of course, I didn't bring it tonight. Stupid. Oh, well. Snorting, yeah. Have you thought about the next guest? Well, who do you want to come on office hours? You can get anybody. You want a micro TV person? Do you want somebody new like Paul B. Nash? Excuse me. He was just out of the blue. Actually, I'd like to have Theodora, but she was busy at the time. Theodora Hatziano. Um, so put your suggestions in. Yeah. I think that would be cool to have some other people. Yep. Um, best episode if bird flew around the world. Okay. It's a good title. It was a good graphic too. Vicks around the neck, chest, under nose, wrap up in blankets helps with cough. I bet. I really don't do anything to help myself, right? I don't know why. Uh, disturbing and beautiful animation in yesterday's New York Times, narrated by an amphibian biologist studying frogs. Huge die-off in the last decade due to fungal disease. And the problem is that the fungi are growing at increased temperatures, right? The planet is warming and the Fungi, which have a lower reproductive temperature, are now becoming adapted to higher temperatures, and they're killing hosts as a consequence. You know, before they were, their their reproduction was need they needed um, lower temperature, but now it's going up, and they're adapting to it. Yep, yep, huge die offs. You bet. Uh, gargling with warm salt is a classic cough remedy. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button, folks. Well, we're actually at 150 likes and 158 people. So thank you very much for that. <clears throat> I, I did explain why I got the, the recent the vaccine. Yeah. Do I stock cough drops? I just had Karen pick this up today for me. Ludens. Cherry. Wild cherry. Oral demulcent. Well, there's a lot here. Should I take one? Yeah, what the hell? Why not? You take. I find that at night when you're sleeping and you cough, you take one of these and it helps. Yeah, it helps. But the, the, the most annoying thing is the drippy nose, okay? It's freaking annoying. And... Your nose gets rough from keeping rubbing the the uh, <clears throat> uh, ch um, Kleenex on it. Does anyone have a solution for the rubbing nose? And what should I put on it to make it soft? Right. Antigen and PCR tests detect the presence of an infection. Which one is better for measuring? The amount of infection. Or is there another better way if you can only use a nose probe? Well, neither one detects actual infection, right? It's a byproduct, genomes or proteins. The best assay would be a plaque assay. But to do that, you need... A BSL-3 laboratory, and, and most people don't have that. So they revert to using PCR and antigen tests, which are faulty. We've talked about that um, <clears throat> many times. Um, 
How did the placenta originate from a virus? Oh, <laughs> so many years ago, <clears throat> a mammal which didn't have a placenta was infected by a retrovirus, and the retrovirus integrated in the genome, and then the the um, fusion protein of the retrovirus was co-opted to fuse the cells to make the blast, which is the layer of cells fused surrounding the placenta, the maternal um, baby barrier. So it's a protein that was taken from the retrovirus, and now it's a cell protein called syncytion. Very cool. Right? <laughs> What's cluster of differentiation? It's a CD number, which are um, markers on the surface of a variety of cells, B cells, T cells, dendritic cells, CD4, CD8, called cluster of differentiation. And they are specific for specific kinds of cells and functions. Viruses in the upper atmosphere, there are unqualified nutters that reject viruses can be airborne. Oh, they can be. There's very clear evidence that they can be airborne. No question. <laughs> I don't believe he has a cold until we see a black ass thing. Yeah. It would be cool. But I'm not going to do it. Are you or other, the other TWIV panel <clears throat> getting calls from the media about the new SARS-CoV-2 variant? No, we are not. Because the media goes to pundits like the cardiologist and Peter Hotez and others. Uh, MDs who, who they think know everything. I don't mean to disparage them, but they don't often know about fundamental virology, right? So they get asked and they get it wrong. Um, <clears throat> so the, the new variants are no big deal, you know? These things are going to arise forever. Not a problem. But no, they don't. Ask us. I don't know why. I wonder if they think we're just journalists. So why would they ask another journalist, right? Does it take a bit longer than these days for a home COVID test to show a positive result? You know, there's some... Anecdotal data, it says that, but I just don't buy it. I don't think it's reliable. No, I don't think it's, there's a difference. <laughs> Twim 300, folks, tomorrow. The Max Planck Institutes. Yep, Craig has got some insight. Where once the Kaiser Wilhelm Institutes, that's right. I was once at the one in Stuttgart and it had the old name in the stone on the building, yeah. It was Kaiser Wilhelm who started all these things. That's right. That's absolutely right. Hmm. To have a sterilizing vaccine, would you have to have reactions to the virus at a more local, like, cellular level? Or you would have to have antibodies there that could block infection all the time. And that's not just happening because antibody levels, after you're immunized, they go down. And then you have memory cells who will respond after you get the next infection. And then you are going to make virus because it doesn't come up. The antibodies don't come up right away. There's always a delay. So that's why you can't have sterilizing immunity. Cryptids are animals that cryptozoologists believe may exist somewhere in the wild, but whose presence, present existence is disputed 
or unsubstantiated by science. That's very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> hmm. Do we know how effective this year's flu vaccine is? I don't think so yet. yet. Not yet. It's a bit early. Soon. Do anabolic steroids have any negative effect? Yeah, they tend to suppress immune responses, right? So that's not good. <laughs> Mark says, true or false, sniffling is a side effect of your body's cytokine storm response against the pathogen causing the cold. I don't know what causes sniffling. Allergies, chronic sinus infection, navel obstruction. Um, your immune system is down due to exhaustion, blah, blah, blah. Why am I sniffling when I'm not sick? Allergies. So, I think it could be a side effect of a cytokine storm for sure. Are you saying that washing hands can help against cat catching a cold? Yes. Studies have shown that colds are transmitted by hand to mucous membrane contact. And um, though it's, it's very different from aerosol or airborne spread, right? So, yes, if you... Um, Wash your hands when you get home. In, if you're out and about and you're touching things, before you touch your face, wash your hands. It will really help. And don't shake hands with people. That's another way to transmit rhinovirus infections. Yeah. Well, thank you, Abdul Aziz, for your support. Have you ever met a Saudi scientist? I'm sure I have, yeah. I can't I can't tell you who it was, but Yep, for sure. <laughs> Vince is in town tonight. Are the flies still at it? No, the flies are all gone. Yep. Listen to the twenty twenty three WHO episode and I like the discussion on what qualifies as a pandemic. Do you think any rhinoviruses qualify as a pandemic this year? Well, that's a good question. You know, Amy thinks they are. They disrupt your life. That's part of a discussion, but I'm not sure that they are sufficiently disruptive. I don't know. The WHO doesn't call them, call them a pandemic, right? And Amy would say, what do they know? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think it needs to be really disruptive, right? Um, what can I tell you about a vaccine for C. diff? I can't tell you anything that is out of my wheelhouse. You can ask Michael Schmidt, though. There is a phase three trial for Pfizer's C. diff vaccine. You can Google it and look up. It indicates strong potential effect in reducing duration and severity of disease based on secondary endpoints. So, uh, yes, we are doing... Vaccines against this important pathogen, yeah. Heat up chicken broth. Yeah, I'm not going home. I had chicken broth last night. It was good. <laughs> Another good science history book is Rabbit, A Cultural History of the World's Most Diabolical Virus by Dr. Bill Wasik. I don't know that one. It sounds good. Peter writes, if I refer people to watch your virology lectures, what prerequisites do you think I should recommend first? Basic biology, microbiology, some chemistry. I think you need some basic biology to learn how things work, right? Gene expression and so forth, DNA replication, yeah. But most people who take it at Columbia don't have that background. They do all right. 
<laughs> Against a cold, fresh ginger, cloves, lemon juice, thyme. I think that sounds great. Is chick an alpha? Yes, chikungunya is an alpha virus. Phenylephedrine is the drug to, to take. The FDA is taken off the market. Uh, it's just awesome. You're a virologist with a virus and B doing the show. Respect. Thank you. I am a virologist and I like doing this live stream to educate people about it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Artemis says, it's. I read some mycoplasma can have an incubation time of up to five years. Is it because they reproduce so slowly? <laughs> Indeed. Yep. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey, isn't that the guy who did the um, the HIV AIDS movie? I think so. That was really good. We had a hot shower at the hotel. Okay, <clears throat> I will do that. Vincent, when you have when I have a cold, I take cold Alka Seltzer. It stops mucus production, and my sinuses are clear for. Four to five hours. Amazingly, I haven't had a cold since BC before COVID. Yeah, I've had two in the last few weeks. Damn it. Uh, yep, it's annoying. It's annoying because the scratchy throat is annoying. You can't sleep. The little cough. The dripping nose. No matter how much I blow my nose, it just keeps dripping out. What the hell is that about? Uh, I read this morning of a new nanoparticle developed by the University of Toronto that targets delivery of mRNA to muscle while minimizing delivery to organs like liver and spleen. Okay. And this is good. Why? We don't want it in the liver and spleen? Okay. Can you inhale possibly pathogenic bugs in the shower? Yeah, if you have... Stuff growing in the corners, right? If you've got black stuff in the corner of your tile, that could be a problem. So clean it up. Everything is dangerous. <laughs> For the rubbing nose, put some lipstick. Are you serious, tourist? You want me to put lipstick on my nose? I could put chapstick, right? I think that would be good. Alu tissue would be good. <clears throat> yeah, but now in New York, everything is going to be closed, so it's not going to get anything. Mentholatum on the nose, yeah. Yep. Vaseline. Yeah, Vaseline, that would be good. Mm. Glycerin. Thank you, folks. It's very kind of you. <laughs> My favorite Luden cherry cough drops. Yeah, you like these? I agree, drippy nose is annoying. Use puff tissues with soothing lotion for your nose. CVS or Dwayne Reed carries puffs with lotion. Okay. <clears throat> Only cure I know for a sore nose is sleep, but it ain't easy when you're coughing. Yeah, that's the problem. Coughing. Not fun. Uh, let's see. Smearing Vaseline around your nostrils is gross, but it works to prevent chafing. I can imagine that, yeah. <clears throat> Kleenex makes soothing lotion tissues. I think you, the, these suggestions are great. Maybe tomorrow I get some. I stop on the way back to the incubator and get some of these things, okay? Should risk groups uh, get kidney tests? Yes. Or a nephrologist who's here would tell you that. But there's some kidney function tests you need to do to make sure you can get Paxlovid, yeah. You bet. <laughs> okay. You could put an acupuncture needle between your eyebrows for nasal congestion. <laughs> 
yeah, I'm not going to do that. I have no idea how to do it, right? We have elective surgery that, that are being canceled for the next few weeks because of what? Respiratory disease in the hospital? Maybe. <clears throat> Wouldn't be surprised, yeah. <laughs> Peter's usual fix for drippy nose. A paper towel stuck up each nostril. Very attractive. Look like a walrus. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do that. It, that'll certainly do it, but it would look ridiculous, right? If I could stick a tissue. But this is ridiculous, right? We have to have a balance between effectiveness and ridiculousness, yeah. <clears throat> Kyrgyzak made a tattoo video this week that features the immune system. Okay. I have a tattoo I'd like to get right here. Virus particle. Yeah, I have a, a, a drawing. It's going to be right there. That would be cool. Yep. <laughs> Cold air by itself makes my nose runny. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, folks. <clears throat> I couldn't find the button in time. I'm really sorry about that. It sucks. Um, PCR test DNA and the antigen test protein amounts depend on the size of the sample. The antigens are produced <clears throat> by the immune system. So it does the ratio. Antigens to DNA measure strength of immune reaction. No, the antigens are produ produced by virus infection. So it doesn't have anything to do with the immune response, right? Question. Do immunologists understand why antibodies reduce over time? Was the cost on the body of keeping antibodies at a certain level? That's it. Because it's a cost to keep antibodies at a high level. You don't want to do that. You want to keep them low, and that's why they go down. It's not good to have them high. For sure. Hmm. Yes. So, it's, there's a cost to keeping antibodies high, and the body will not deal with that. For sure. That's a good point. Yep, I can't see it anymore. <laughs> Microbe TV has been the best reminder to wash my hands. Cool. Thank you, SRR, for your contribution. Paso Robles, nice wine country. Very good. Another great science book is Ian... Wilmot's after Dolly. That's the, the sheep, right? The engineered sheep. As long as you have memory B cells, you can make antibodies when needed. That's right. But there's always a delay, remember. There's going to be a delay. Uh, where, is, where is Amy coming back? No, she's not coming back. No, she's not going to be back, sadly. Yeah. That was Matthew McConaughey, a Dallas Buyers Club. Yep. Very good movie. Yep. Honey and eucalyptus. I love all these remedies. Thank you so much. Yeah, it'd probably take another five days to clear up. Yeah. Yeah, P B cells make antibodies and T cells do other things. They help B cells make antibodies. They also kill virus infected cells. They're very important. Yeah. A hot shower can be 50-50 if your body is having a high hard time regulating your temperature. It can be some effort on your body and waste your energy. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Got it. Somehow, the human nose has an infinite supply of snot from a finite body. A mystery of science. <laughs> you have a lot of snot. Yep. Take a COVID antigen again tomorrow. Sure. 
I can, but I don't think this is COVID. But I'll do it. It's fine. Yep. Thank you, James, for your contribution to science communication. We really appreciate it. <laughs> All these remedies for keeping your nose from dripping. What do you know about plus one frame shifting? I'm aware it was discovered in the 80s, but I mean in reference to mRNA following three-plus doses. Any thoughts? So the frame shifting happens when there's a sequence in the RNA that causes the ribosome to slip and changes the frame. And there's some suggestion that this happens with mRNA vaccines, but I'm not sure that the, the consequences um, is significant. Let's see, frame shifting mRNA vaccine. N methyl pseudo uridylation of mRNA causes plus one frame shifting. So um, you get a different protein. Yep. Potential off target effects for future therapeutics. I don't think there's any problem with it as far as we know. It just happens. I don't think it's an issue. Okie dokie. Ricola cough drops. Those are good. Those are very mild. Yep. Uh, CVS will be open. Get Benadryl and Vaseline. That will be good. Where is the CVS in my neighborhood? Let's see. CVS. Okay. They know there's one in Madison Square Garden. Uh, yeah, there's not much around here. I don't want to go to Madison Square Garden. Uh, we should send you a care package. Puffs or Kleenex with lotion, cherry, ludens, chicken soup, chapstick, Vaseline. You're welcome to send it. I'm happy to, to try it, yeah. I don't particularly take care of myself, right? Make it an enterovirus tattoo. It's going to be a generic uh, icosahedral capsid, which could be a, an enterovirus for sure. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Doreen, <laughs> my recent COVID infection presented only as a mild dry cough. Doreen suggested I do a test and sure enough positive. Okay, yeah, you can have different symptoms. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Mine presented as chills, which are a departure from the usual sore throat indicator. Yep. So sore throat is a common COVID thing, right? Yep. What do we have here? 172 likes, 167 people. That's not bad. Thank you, folks. Can you... All right, let's do this one. Are there any drawbacks to Paxlovid? I don't see any. They help you get better. Uh, will one day the virus evolve to resist it? Um, it hasn't so far, and it's been used extensively, right? So I don't know if it will. You can certainly do it in the lab, but I don't know if those are fit to be out there in nature. Can you explain the antigen tests? They measure proteins produced by the virus. Which proteins? Capsid, since I imagine they're the only ones that persist. So the antigen tests can um, measure spike and they can measure nucleocapsid protein. Right. Natural killer cells, cool name. How are they different to T cells? Different mechanism of killing, different receptors involved than T cells, different pathogens recognized by them. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> What is the cost of high antibody levels? You know, I I read an article once about that. I don't know where it was, but they were saying that yeah, there is a fitness cost to having high antibody levels, and we don't want to do that as a consequence. I don't remember what it is, but you could you could look it up. There is an there is an article. Yeah, so you, it costs a lot to make high levels of antibodies, and uh, you don't want to do that. Why? because it's a lot of antibody, it's a lot of protein in the serum, and it costs um, to do that. <clears throat> Maybe that's not an answer.
Our house in Miami had dead iguanas inside the roof vents. Two toilets affected. It was a hot summer. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. Who will tattoo you? I don't know. Not sure. Tattoo you. If you find someone reliable, right? It'll be right here. Little icosahedral capsid. Yeah. It'd be cool. Usually, a runny nose dries up in a few days and turns into a chest cold. This is all upper tract for me. Walgreens on 7th and 28th. Yeah, I've been to that Walgreens. You know, everything in that store is behind a locked box. You can't take anything without getting someone to open it. It's ridiculous, right? There must be so much theft. Wow. <laughs> thank you, uh, Tona. Anyway, thank you. That's right near me. Yeah, I've been there. Uh, Eucerin cream around nostril can prevent tissue against nose rubbing. Yep, that's great. Wouldn't high antibody levels increase the chance of autoimmune problems? So you could get extensive somatic hypermutation from that and make antibodies to self. Yeah, that could happen. And that's what some people are worried about. Yep. Well, it looks like we have reached the end, folks, of uh, your questions. All good questions. I always wonder when I do these whether there are going to be any questions. And there always are. There were... 167 of you, appreciate your presence and uh, asking questions and chatting among yourselves. I want to thank our moderators for tonight. We had less, <laughs> less, Andrew, mm, um, Tom, Steph, and... Um, uh, vanity Nutrition. Did I miss anyone? Tom. I don't think I, I think I repeated him. Mm. Thank you all for uh, being your moderators. We appreciate it. And thanks, everyone, for coming back, even after three uh, weeks of absence. So we will be back next week, Wednesday. Wednesday. Let's see what the date is calendar. Wednesday, uh, the 20th of December. Maybe we'll have a guest. We'll see. But uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Mean meanwhile, um, be safe. See you next week. Bye-bye. Where's the plaque assay thingy? Here it is. Bye-bye.